Today we're going to go through Pathfinder calibration, the setup, adjusting the camera settings, uh, different portions of the video, validation, calibration, uh, the grade card, different components of the Pathfinder. Uh, to start, we're going to go with an FDA frame, and we're going to show you how to adjust the focus on the camera. So if your image is blurry and not the clarity that you would like to see, we're going to show you how to make an adjustment on that. When you do that, you will need to do a full calibration of the Pathfinder. Okay, we're going to go through a couple different settings here on the camera. I removed the cover, and the first thing I'm going to show you is the switch for autofocus and manual focus. So you can see the MF and the AF. MF is for manual focus, and that's where you'd want your Pathfinder to be set to at all times. For adjusting the focus, we flip this switch to the AF very carefully, take a few pictures until we have a clear picture. Once we do, we flip the switch back to MF for manual focus. Okay, on this camera, we have a stabilizer, which we have in the on position. On this side of the camera, we have their own dial for our different settings. And right now we have that switch to the amp. That's where your camera should be set to at all times. On the top of the camera, we have our transmitter. This is what sends the signal to the flashes for them to go off when we take a picture. On the back side, we have a test button. And if I push the test button, it should cause my flashes to go off. Keep in mind, this transmitter will only be on the camera if you have a Pathfinder set up with flash units. If you do not have flashes, you will not have this on the top of the camera. We're now going to start the calibration process. First thing I'm going to do is remove my stops from the A-frame. I'm then going to put a piece of styrofoam up that represents the thickness of my stone. So if I'm primarily going to do a 3CM setup, I would use a one inch thick piece of styrofoam. If I was doing a two centimeter calibration, I would go with a three quarter inch or a half inch piece of foam. Something to shift those dotted calibration cords out away from the A-frame, roughly the same thickness as the material you're going to be photographing. So I'm gonna get that set up right now. Okay, there's a great card that is in the center of your boards or on one of your boards. You want to be somewhat in the center of your A-frame. What this does is the software uses this to determine what your lighting is. So your white balance, uh, the different fields that the software calibrates, it uses this to determine what that lighting is. So this is very important. Uh, you might get a message sometimes that says no great card is found. That just means that your lighting needs to be adjusted. But this is very important. Um, if you're missing yours, you can call the service department. We can get you a new one order or tell you what paint color you can get at a local store to, to be put in place. Uh, the other thing we have on here is what's called calibration targets. These are for doing the validation. You notice how there's one on each side. The location of them is not particular. You just want to have them on the A-frame. The software will actually take a picture of the A-frame and it will remember where those targets are. So if something changes or moves, the software will notify you. Right? Now we're going to start the calibration process. All right, we're now gonna go through the Slabsmith calibration portion. First, I'm gonna go into the admin file, which contains all your settings for Slabsmith. So if we open up the admin file, we're gonna look at photo stations. So this would be for if I had multiple photo, photo stations in different locations. Say I had, uh, three different shops across a certain state or country, I could have a photo station for each location 
and one database that all the slabs would be fed into. So each photo station would have its own calibration. That's what this would be for. So in this case, this would be our software right here. And in this case, we have our Pathfinder, which is our typical training center, uh, what our trainers use for doing their photographs. Today, we're gonna use training videos. So this is a photo station that I actually just created just for today's video. All right, so if I expand this, I'll be able to see my calibrations that I have listed underneath this. And at the current time, I don't have any. So I'm gonna click on this add calibration and I'm gonna give it a name. So we're just gonna use 3CM for our name. Click okay. And I'm gonna click the apply button. All right, if I go under this photo station, this 3CM calibration that I have, uh, you can see how there's no slabs, uh, no information. I can't shift anything uh, because there's no calibration that's actually been done with it, All right? So at this point now, I'd be ready to set up a calibration for this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this and I'm going to open my slab soon software. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump into doing our calibration. I'm gonna click on my calibration icon. Now I'm going to take this down two different ways. Uh, one would be is if I'm just redoing my calibration because something moved or something changed and I just wanna redo it, uh, that would be one where you wouldn't have to change any lighting, okay? so. We're just gonna do that one real quick here. And then after that, I'm gonna show you a little bit about the lighting and the changes for the lighting. So I'm gonna click my camera icon here to take a picture. And I'm gonna go ahead and select my dots here. I wanna make sure that I stay on the same vertical dot and the same horizontal uh, row across here. So we're gonna actually bring this in. Um, I can see on my board right here, I have this little brighter spot right here. That would give me some errors when I try calibrating or not give me as good a results as what I wanna see. Uh, so we can kind of shave that off or don't necessarily need that whole board. Uh, by all means, if, if you would like to get your full surface area, you, you can. Uh, it's just a lot more work with adjusting lights. So uh, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit this little green circle right here to start the process. All right, so what I'm looking at here is uh, if if I'm not gonna adjust my lighting, I'm still gonna wanna glance at this. My white balance is excellent. Uh, exposure is excellent. Light variation, it says poor, but you have to look at these boxes off to the right. So 93.4% of my picture is good. 5.4 is, it's in the okay territory. And 1.2% would be in that poor. Zero is in bad. So that's why I'm getting the poor rating on this. And if I click on my light map, this is going to show me what my picture is going to show me. So the area right here on that top left where that hot spot's coming in, that's actually what's drawing down my quality of photo. The rest of it being in this green area, that is a good place to be. Green, light green, that's a very good place for you to be with your picture. So in this case, I would be happy and I would be moving on with my photo, all right? So uh, at this point now, I'm good with my photo. I would now jump in and do my validation, all right? So at this point, then I would click on validation and I'm just gonna go ahead and take a picture, all right? What the software is going to do is it's gonna look at these two targets and it's gonna determine two things. One is what is the color of those targets? It's looking at these the same as it looks at this gray card and it determines the color and it can rate my photo off of that. It also is looking at what color is the software seeing. And if I had a flash that burnt out or something in the future uh, and I take a picture, the software is gonna say, hey, there's something that doesn't look right with that target. There's a problem and it's gonna throw a flag and say, your lighting is wrong. It's, it's brighter or it's darker than what it was. 
That's what those targets are for. The other part is if something moves. So it remembers where these targets are in the picture. And if those move by a certain amount that can be set, it's going to say, hey, there's a problem. Your target moved. And it'll show you on the bottom of the of the screen on those targets, it'll show you how much it moved in which direction. And that's an alarm then that will tell you that, hey, you need to revalidate your software, recalibrate your software. Uh, that might be an annoying alarm to some, uh, but you have to remember that if that alarm wasn't there, you would cut your slab. And after, uh, after you find the expensive mistake of, of your material now being damaged, um, that would be your alarm otherwise. Now the software will actually tell you before you cut the material, uh, letting you know that you might want to take a look at it. All right, so uh, I take the picture, I make sure my dots are lined up on the rows that I want them to be. So we're gonna go ahead and click on there and there. And now I hit the green circle. It's gonna look at those two targets. It's gonna remember where they are. And it's also gonna determine the color of them. Click OK. Again, there I have my 92%, and that's really what I'm looking at. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click the just to save right here. And yes, I wish to continue. All right, the validation was saved successfully. Perfect. We're going to click OK. And at this point now, I would actually do my calibration. Okay, so first we validate, then we calibrate. Okay, so I'm going to Take a picture. Once again, I'm going to move my targets into the rows that I've been using. Uh, you might notice these dots are not on where they should be. That's perfectly normal. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and hit my green circle here. All right. That is it. I'm going to go ahead and take this target, and this is actually the zero zero point of my slab smith right now. Okay, so if I brought this picture into Alpha Cam, uh, this bullseye would be in the lower left hand corner on my table template. This is the zero zero point for for this picture. So now we need to set that. We're going to drag this down into this lower left hand corner right here, just so that we're close. Um, it's not perfect, it's not set, we're not finished. But I'm gonna drag that down into that area so that it's closer. So now I know that I'm off by an inch or two in the X and the Y, all right? Once I drag that down in that area, I'm gonna go ahead and click the save. And it now says that my calibration is saved, okay? I go ahead and click okay. All right, at this point, what I like to do is I like to just close out of here and go into Slab Maker and take a picture and see what we get. All right, so if I hover over my camera icon, you can see that the calibration was done 1127 of 23. So that would be today. I'm gonna go ahead and click a picture. Click on the camera, take a picture. Now it's gonna take a picture, it's gonna look at it. And you can see my yellow dotted line, how that is around the area. Anything within that is calibrated. All right, you also can see now my targets down here, my bullseye. So you can see how close we are there. All right, now if that were to not line up, I would get an alarm saying that there's a problem. Okay, now that our calibration is complete, we're gonna go ahead and open Slot Maker. I'm going to hover over the icon right here for the camera. And if I do a right click, it's going to give me the option to take a background image. Now I'm just going to show you what the difference is. So before I do this, I'm going to take a picture. OK, notice how it doesn't paint anything on my screen. It does that in what's called a background image. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna do a take background image. What this does is it takes a picture and it says, this is what's always here. So now when you put a slab on the A-frame and you take a picture, the software looks at what's different and whatever's new or different, it's going to leave alone. Everything else is going to paint uh, background, uh, that purple background color. Okay, 
So now you can see how everything is purple in the background. Uh, another thing that I can do is if I wish to always have my photo cropped, so I'm not always seeing this whole area, I can bring that up and hit the little disc right here to save that. Now, when I take a picture, it's going to automatically pull that in for me. So I'm not always seeing the whole background. This concludes the calibration video. Please see our next video to set the origin point within Slabsmith. It's